All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this cold cast presentation. Scrimcast live coming at you cold cast style with me, casting host Beef. And joining me, Emperor, aka Brized of Domain of Pain. I think he's fixing his sound, but he'll be with us here in just a moment. We're going to have Complexity Gaming taking on a mixed scrim composed of, well, some top players. TTEs fielding uh, two right here, one from Domain of Pain, one from the Honkast crew, and the sixth man for Trademark going to make five. Should be a very good one here momentarily. And, uh, well, Emp, you back just yet? Nope! All right. Looks like Emp is still trying to fix up his sound here in just one moment. But let's take a look at this one. Complexity doing pretty well today so far. Uh, looked real good against Trademark in a couple games ago and just barely lost out against Stay Green in their last scrim. But, of course, going to be making their way toward more. A little bit uh, just trying to keep the practice going. And looks like they're trying out Riser today. Putting him in the jungle and uh, maybe in the suicide role. I don't know. Looks like he's mostly going to be playing in the jungle, though. So maybe see a little bit of a switch up here. Who knows? And let's take a look at the uh, bands going out here. Blind Band was, in fact, Parasite and Tempest by the Legion team. Moravis choosing to ban out Keeper of the Forest and Plague Rider. So getting rid of a strong suicide. And, of course, Keeper of the Forest, just the strong hero in general. And Emp, are we back yet? Damn it, Emperor. What are you doing? So we'll see when he's ready to go. He'll be ready. Lockpick, we do have Wild Soul, Bubbles, Sandwraith, Pharaoh, Wretched Hag, and Tremble. All going to be making it into the lock pool. So getting that strong suicide jungler right there with, uh, with Wild Soul. And then, of course, more suicides going to be in there. Your Wretched Hag, your Bubbles. Pharaoh, all with potential suicide. Sandwraith making it in. Very, very interesting pickup. And then Tremble, of course. Uh, a very strong hero in the short lane, in the solo position. We'll see if either of these teams do choose to pick him up momentarily. Going into the banning phase right now, we do have Moon Queen, Ophelia, and Silhouette being banned out thus far. Some of the stronger carry heroes being banned by B-Kid. We'll see if he uh, rounds it up with a Draconis banner. Maybe leaves that one on the board. Demented Shaman going to be banned out by Moravis, so getting rid of some healing. Interesting. Both these players kind of stick into a pattern, at least thus far. So taking another look here at the lock pool. I mean, the suicide's really dominant in there. There's no junglers really the, in the lock pool other than uh, Wild Soul, which will probably be first pick to play that jungle or the suicide role. And it appears the Emperor actually just completely disappeared. I have, I have literally no clue where he is. You're typing in game? Oh, I have team chat ignored. Okay. <laughs> Type for me in Skype. That makes more sense now. Um, yeah, okay. So <laughs> he's still trying to get things fixed out. That makes more sense. I was like, oh, Imp wouldn't just ditch me. I mean, he, he's pretty good about telling me if he's got to go. But, uh, well, getting back into this one. The last bans, in fact, Beacon does ban out Draconis, so getting rid of a lot of those carry heroes. And then Aluna being banned out by Moravis. So, getting rid of that Aluna. Going to be making the uh, support heroes perhaps a little bit more valuable. Luna the only one banned out just yet, but TTE still picks up with second pick. Glacius, and then a Torturer. Are they going to leave the uh, the strong support heroes for complexity? Maybe a, a Nymphora, maybe an Empath, Engineer um, is still available. So we'll see that. Maybe compliment the Zephyr as Emperor. It sounds like you're back. Beef, can you hear me? Yeah, I am back. I can. I can hear you. I hope you get All everything right. worked sounds out. Good. Yeah, everything seems to be great. Well, that is very so, good. All right, I was actually going to comment. I bet Cole's going to go for the Zephyr again. I was looking at their past few games because to see. I was actually interested to see why uh, Murray was decided to ban DS, uh, whether it was a strat he was trying to run or whether it's because of a Zephyr or something like that. I saw that uh, Complexity was actually running Zephyr like the past three or four scrims, or most of them. Not every single scrim, but like maybe 75% of the past few games. So. 
yeah, it should be a good one right here. And so Pebbles Engineer being picked up by Complexity. Going to go with that strong, stunning potential, which means that Zephyr, uh, if they choose to run a jungle, that Zephyr would uh, most likely be a solo. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when you're looking at the lock pull there, I mean, if they choose to run a jungle, you're saying, but okay, there's a, there's a wild soul, and that, that's pretty much it, right? Yeah, I mean, that's really your only it's, option. Uh, so. <laughs> Not maybe you won't be seeing it so much of a jungle line this game. Ravis threw a couple of those troll locks into the pool. Not that Tremble's a troll lock, but maybe not the most accessible for all teams. So, yeah, it does certainly require a certain skill set to play that hero effectively. Need to be very cognizant of uh, Matt Present says, Hey, I was answering questions and I said it's either Empath or Bramble is the next breakout hero on the scene. And uh, Bramble has actually been picked up quite a bit recently. Whoa. Extremely limited success, though. Yeah, uh, it's... Uh, I, when, when did you see him picked up? I, I think I saw one game. Was it Pencils that picked him up? or uh, Pencils definitely picked one up. Sweet Pro was playing. Was that against you? Yeah. No, no. no we sure. haven't played them ever in a real match. I think Just that might have been scramble. against Complexity. I'm not quite sure. But uh, yeah, Pencils, I've seen them pick it up. And then in a lot of scrims, I've, I've actually... I think I've seen TTEs play it in a scrim before, and uh, okay. no, I've seen it in a lot of mixed scrim teams. Okay, okay. Well, um... Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Sandwraith? What? Yeah, yeah, they're going for the Sandwraith carry. I think Sandwraith is still actually pretty damn powerful. Uh, really hard to lane him, of course, but if he does get his early items in, he he does snowball quite hard. He's I actually like using his ult. I mean, they reduced his ult cooldown, made it a lot easier to use that every single time it's up to be a heavy gank presence. I really like being as active as I can with that ultimate. Uh, just looking to pick off all those weak, squishy support heroes as often as I can in a fight as soon as they cast their disables. Uh, click your ulti and try to home in and collect gold. But mm, still, you look at that complexity lineup and that is terrifying. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a scary lineup. Like, I, yeah. I don't remember a game that I have seen with such a scary lineup, you've got your your middle lane there with B Kid on Pebbles and your Franzi babysitting him. They're gonna set up your early and your mid game. Zephyr is just going to crazy farm. Well, actually, hold on. Pebbles and Engineer most likely gonna be going long lane. Excuse me. Um, and then your Hag's probably gonna solo mid with your Zephyr short. Does that make more sense? Uh, maybe. I mean, you actually look at the, the heroes. They don't actually. They aren't set up for the strongest, strongest of lanes. I mean, that Pebbles, the Pebbles NG lane will be their, their strongest setup. And it, unless it's shut down by, I, I don't know what they're gonna send. <laughs> yeah, is it gonna be a Glacius Bramble? Is that what they're gonna? No, a Torch. Hold the hell Glacius, on. Gla Glacius Sandwraith, and then probably Torch Bramble, and then a Bubbles. I, yeah. And then or are they gonna try lane the Sand? Or they might try lane Torture Glacius Sandwraith, solo Bramble, solo Bubbles. I mean. Yeah, I think that... And then he uh, might rotate. Damn, I actually don't know what's going on. I think that Trouf, I want to say, is going to play a solo short bubbles. Or maybe a mid bubbles. I don't know. I actually have no clue what's going like, on the Hellborn team. Okay, Moon's but, getting a health potion. I was going to say maybe he's in a jungle, but you see Hag going up top already. Maybe he's just going up top to place the ward. He might not actually be suicide in the end. He might just be placing the ward for his team, uh, blinking up there before they can defend it. Um... Yeah, I'm interested to kind of see. I'd like to predict, but I'm not entirely sure whether they'll go for the tri-lane setup or not off the start. Yeah, this is really weird. Riser, of course, playing the Wretched Hag, a, a uh, player with a lot of suicide experience, but Moon on Wild Soul. He has a lot of suicide experience as well. So, going to be very, very interesting to see what the actual lane setups are here momentarily. But before we do get too far into this game, guys, I do want to remind you that uh, we're going to be doing more casts for the rest of the day, going to be going into a replay cast of a Haunter Gold Let's match a little bit later. On. And between then, going to be doing the Sound Blaster Heroes League. We do, of course, have round one of Qualifier number four going on today. And with that, I'm going to be doing a Sound Blaster headset giveaway. So if you want your chance to win a Sound Blaster Rage wireless headset, stick around for that cast up in the next couple hours. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw. Heimer bought three mono batteries on Sandwraith and then sold them. It was kind of funny to watch. Yeah. What I don't know if he troll. accidentally was hitting a button for a hotkey and screwed it up, or if he was just troll buying and then selling or what, but... I thought you were laughing because I was talking about the Sound Blaster Heroes. No, 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 no. That's, that's not a laughing matter, Em. No, I, I, I'd rather not talk about I'm, that. I'm still mad at you for not registering. 
yeah, yeah, you know, but there's three more. There are, there are three more. So you guys so. are gonna get registered because I wanna, I wanna cast you guys in that. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, but you know what? If we if we winded up playing and went through this time, then there wouldn't we wouldn't be playing in the future cycles. So That's it's gonna true. be the same amount of our games regardless. That's true, unless you. No, no. Unless we not, fail each no, time. No, I'm not even going to talk about it. I'm not even going to say it. That's no, possible. It's possible. So <laughs> I'm not even going to say it. No, right. but it, it is totally possible. So anyway, no, 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 moving no. forward, we are going to see that Pebbles NG lane mid, solo short lane Zephyr. And that, ooh, he's going to be in. I mean, we're going to be looking at a really farmed up sand right here. And a pretty suffer Zephyr, I take it. Um,. Do you think they'll wind up rotating the lanes at all? I mean, do they have too much mobility in the first place with these lanes? Because the Wild Soul is going to be jungle. I mean, I guess they really can't do too much to help them against that dry lane. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it's this is kind of a, a scary lineup for Complexity because they did get like really, really good heroes. I didn't even think about it right away, at least. As well, they do there get you bubbles. go. Like, what the hell? I was just looking at that. What happened? Uh, mm. <sighs> Stun, keg, or some harass, stun, perfectly timed keg, and just enough damage. All right. um, that really, really, really helps complexity. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I completely looked away from Bubbles. I'm like, Bubbles, like, uh, whatever, they're not going to be Yeah, able Bubbles made against an engineer. You're like, yeah, good luck, keg. Good yeah. luck, Bubbles. Yeah. Yeah, but what are you going to do? Trout gives up the first blood there, so that's not going to be ideal. But talking about the team again, I mean, I looked at this team and I was like, oh, man, their team is incredible. And then I didn't really think about their lanes. So I was like, hmm, I, I would think that they would have put the Hag mid with Pebbles Engineer top. Um, like, I feel like that might have been better, but of course then you wouldn't be able to roam your Engineer bottom. And I guess if you're trying to figure out what the opposing team's lanes are, that's not going to work as well. Right, and if they did a tri-lane with sand right top, your yeah. pebbles might be hurting on farm. You never want to see pebbles with hurt farm. Yeah. So. Yeah, so it's just a hard decision to make in total. But yeah, Zephyr definitely going to be struggling on farm down here in the bottom lane. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, you know, we'll see. Hopefully he can recover. If uh, the pebbles gets a sound enough farm, that's always what they say. You should always put the pebbles in the most advantageous lane you have. Because uh, other heroes, they can catch up, and that'll be fine. But Pebbles, if he doesn't get that strong start to go off and, you know, start creaming heroes around the map, then his effectiveness does begin to taper off, so. No, oh, it certainly does, and uh, he's getting a strong start. I mean, he's maintaining mid-400 gold per minute range right now. Of course, uh, going to be able to get, like, 99% of the last hits here in the middle lane and help him to get that uh, Bloodlust kill. In fact, got the last hit on that one. Certainly helps contribute as what is going on here they they look like they want to go on this invis bubbles are they buying or no i thought they might have brought a sentry for oh, a set. okay no i think they're just denying the wave and <laughs> yeah they were both I standing on top of him though it just looked so weird yeah as moravis up in the top lane could he use the spore breath but hag just blinks away and hey, this is a rough matchup for moravis i feel like uh, yeah, he's currently leading the way in CS, but, you know, as Hag begins to whittle his HP down and burns through uh, Bramble's regen, we should see that story change. Yeah, I would definitely expect to see that as Zephyr has gone into the jungle. Needs to be real careful, though. Three players of the Hellborn team going to be trying to collapse on him. And six cents going off as he does back up just a bit. They're still trying to find him. No. Not going to be able to get him as he does make his way over to a different camp for now. Yeah. I actually really like what um, the, the mix team is able to do right now with the roaming Glacius Tort. Maybe they can put some pressure here. I mean, see, the thing is, Bubbles is a great mid. It's pretty hard to gank oh. for him, even with the Glacius Tort. Bramble perhaps in trouble up top. As, uh, well, eight seconds left on the Flash of Darkness. If, yeah, if he gets his bottle off, as in the middle lane, Chain Reaction Sun going to be able to save Bubbles for now. And Glacius is going to come in with the Thunder Blast as well. Looks like in the top lane, Moravis did live. So nobody getting killed after all. No, 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 he did. I, I was going to say, I really do like... Uh that they were able to leave the Sand Wraith alone bottom lane here. Uh, they can maybe mix up the lane. Oh, I guess Glacius is going back. Do, we, do you think you'll see... Yeah, I think Tort is actually going to... Is he going to go stack, or is he going to wind up joining the Bramble top? top? Uh, speaking of Bramble top, he's, he's in some trouble right now. Auto attacks coming in. The Bear not quite able to get over there in time, but with a Chuck right here, doesn't even need it. Stalagmites in the auto attacks. Down goes Moravis, so an already less than advantageous lane 
made a whole lot worse by the presence of a level four pebbles. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, on the plus side, Zephyr is still sitting at 80 GPM, and we're seeing a 300 plus GPM sand rate, so that's one yeah. thing they got going for him. Ooh, Zephyr's actually caught out by Glacius here. He does have Cyclones up. There's no way Glacius can actually drop him, but still denying him even more of that farm. Now, you would mentioned that you think that Sandrate's still strong. A lot of people say that he's just not able to contribute in the uh, early to mid game enough. Do you have to try lane Sandrate in order to secure the farm that he needs? I mean, if you can put him against a solo, like a solo suicide with a dual lane and start pulling for him, and give him an iron shield or something against it, he can get farm. I mean, if it... I don't so much necessarily like Sandrate against the team that Legion has, uh, especially given that they have an engineer. Uh, one of the things I hate most when I play Sandrate is when an engineer pops his ulti, and if you want to ulti in to kill Squishies, Engineer is one of the only quote-unquote Squishies on their team, but for support, he has pretty high armor. His keg knocks him back. Uh, he has a slow that, you know, even pierces magic immunity and that ulti. You get silence warping into it if you want. So, uh, all things considered, Engineer is one of the worst supports to play against with Sandwraith, I feel. And you sort of need that mobility in fights, you know, whether you go phase or steam and getting around those fights. And the Engineer ulti really restricts that. Yeah, it certainly can. And now... What would your your recommendation for the Sandwraith be in, in the uh, early game? How do you want to see him itemized? Does he go for uh, something like a Helm of the Black Legion into a mock? Or does he go for something a little bit different like, uh, say, Ghost Marchers into maybe an early Null Fireblade and try to get active? Or does he just... You could do that. I think the mock is really powerful. I think if you want Ghost Marchers or a stat item, you have two options. You can go Steam Boots, Energizer, then like your mock or something. You can go, well, like, just straight Boots of Speed, Helm, into Mach. Uh, you can go Ghost Marchers into Helm, or into... Oh, Pebbles like, gets you know. the Slagmites onto two right there. Keg gonna come in, actually hitting two as well. And the turret gonna actually push them away as Zephyr's in some actual trouble over here. Desert's Curse coming out, not gonna connect just yet. And Zephyr does get the potion off. The Chuck on to Torture, though, and, well, Frenzy not able to get the Keg just yet. Auto attacks, and Frenzy will go down. Torture takes the fall as well. And B Kid now in a lot of trouble. Does have Stalagmites available and looking for a combo right here. Does not have enough mana. Does have enough mana. And one more auto attack will be able to bring down Riser, but great body blocks. And Pebbles is going to be going down. Shell surfused by Bubbles. And the mixed scrim team gets the better end of that engagement and a kill in the top lane. Yeah, yeah. Bramble actually caught the Wild Soul in the woods. Uh, Sandwraith ulti. I don't know if it was to assist or just to assist with that bottom fight. By the way, Sandwraith got the assist for it as well. Uh, Bramble just caught Wild Soul in the woods, laid down the ulti. Laid down that spore breath or whatever, whatever it, is, it is called spore breath. Spore breath. Wow, nailed, uh, it. nailed it, man! <laughs> you know, just wind up nailing him out there. Um, yeah, so great, great turnaround overall for for mixed team over there. What should we call them? Mixed team just sounds mixed scrim or team Moravis or team team Moravis, team Moravis. There we go. Team uh, Trump, team Moravis. I don't know. Yeah, I just call him whatever I want. I must say, I do normally like getting some sort of stats on Sandwraith before going straight mock, but in a game like this, where they're really denying the Zephyr the farm, if he can safely get his mock before needing to do anything, there is nothing wrong with that. It, it is my personal preference to get stats, because I do like to be really active with that ulti uh, and join Ooh, fights nice as keg. much as... Stalagmites the turret and the auto attacks do finish off White. That was a very nice keg there from Engineer, and White even had the sidestep, just wasn't quite big enough. No, no, no. Yeah, Frenzy really does play an excellent engineer. His yeah. keg's never seen this, honestly. I engineer is my favorite hero to play, mm -hmm. and I just have nothing but respect for Frenzy when I see him that play that hero. It's, it's a hero that does rely on positioning so much, and mm -hmm. his positioning is just perfect most of the time in all these engagements. So, very very good play from Frenzy most of the time. Yep. Um take a look back here. Wild Soul's only sitting at 167 GPM, despite a mostly undisturbed jungle, uh, outside of that gank from Bramble there. And Then you're looking at Zephyr, how's he doing right now? Catch him back up to 149. He managed to did he manage to pull a little bit there? He managed to pull a little bit, got the wave back, but I mean, Sandwraith, he's getting dangerously close to that sword. He is indeed, and Bubbles is actually here. He, gonna use the Shell Surf, take cover. Hey, chain Reaction gonna come out, and the Sandwraith Ultimate being used not actually for a whole lot as well there's a gust interrupting a tp white's tp going to get off of bubbles in some serious trouble right here let's have a shell surf available wow. but uh stalagmites great keg toss <laughs> that looks so funny in the air yeah 
No, if Beak had even delayed his stun by half a second there, Trap was about to Shell Surf out. That was right about to be off cooldown. Yeah. So excellent timing from Beak had not hesitating to throw out his stun. And a great pick off there. I bet Trout did not expect it all to be uh, gusted back there by Zephyr. He looked like he was totally safe. But that's, uh, that gust, when you actually aim it forward, has humongous range. Oh, huge. A Bramble ultimate going to be coming in on top of the Typhoon, on top of the energy field, and Wild Soul will go down. Bramble trying to get out of there. Bramble will be able to escape. Oh, Engineer going to drop the turret as well. Looks like Zephyr did take the fall in the middle of that. Did they get the deny? No, they actually got the kill. As Glacius is actually in some trouble. Going to die to the archers. Shell Surf going to be coming in right there. No kelp field available. Oh, man. What a team fight. That was crazy. So many AoE ultimates going on right there. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I was going to say it looked like Heimer could take out that Pebbles, but I looked at Pebbles' power supply and it had 11 charges in it, so he could have laid out a combo right into the Sand Wraith if he kept chasing. So great decision by Heimer to back out there as well. Yeah, very, very good decision, but uh, that Bramble wall combined with the Energy Field combined with the Typhoon well, and that team Energy fight. Field is actually on the Legion team. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. The, yeah. Well, the uh, Energy sure. Field and the Typhoon, but the Bramble wall actually prevents you from going through it. So that actually yeah, might yeah. have gone against the uh, the Hellborn team, but somehow still just able to take some big, big fights right there. The Bramble Wall prevents you from going through what? You mean walking? Just Yeah, your team. It looked like they trapped two of the heroes behind it, though. It looked like he, he caught two of the heroes in the front of the wall there. Yeah. That they picked off. Well, but yeah. Bramble was actually trapped like right in that area as well. Oh, oh okay, okay. Of... He was tanky enough to withstand all of that yeah. with his uh, shrubbery, just... eh? Did he have he his hit. buff cast on himself? Yep. Did you catch that? And Staring Shrubbery was up, and he was just healing everybody around him for all wow. that Typhoon and energy field damage. And wow. able to walk away. I mean, that's why Bramble is such a strong hero. Yes, indeed. Um, Saturday did pick up his sword now. And trying to get away from Hag. <laughs> Gotta fall here, right? Will die. Neutrals, neutrals, neutrals. Neutrals got him. Nice. And neutrals Bubbles in the middle lane. Taking some pressure from Pebbles. Another Chuck gonna be coming in, but a great take cover there from Trouth. Oh man. Trouth and I were actually just casting together. We just cast an epic, epic game between uh, Complexity and Stay Green. Do you happen to catch that? I, I, I caught some of the earlier games today. I caught some of the scrims between TDM and Stay Green. A couple of the complexity versus... I, I did not catch that game, though. No, I did not. Killing me. Killing me. I'm, that should be your job. Yeah, just sorry to watch, watch my stream. Scrim, <laughs> every day, I, forgive me. I know, I know. Pebble's trying to run down Glacius right here. And Glacius... Oh, no, Glacius. What? What? Come on! All right, that, I, I that, don't know, OB kid. That was maybe it was a. That was Jaws by M Night Shyamalan. As <laughs> what a twist doesn't go in in the bottom lane. The Kelpfield Shell Surf Song of the Sea Desert's Curse all catching out Zephyr. He tried to turn it around there. Bramble Wall comes in. Bat Blast actually going to be applied, and well, Sandraith might be in some trouble here. In fact, almost certainly in some trouble. Hag wants to go in there so bad. There it is. Sonar Scream does finish him off. Franzi with a nice positional ultimate, not catching it to be out. But just making sure that Hag is safe. And Pebbles wants to go with the Stalagmites. Good dodge there by White. That's what I was talking about Sandwraith, though. When you saw that Glacius getting killed, I was thinking, man, if Sandwraith actually had... Well, once again, even just like Steam Boots Energizer, for instance, if Pebbles went on that Glacius and then Sandwraith hit his ulti, he would just be able to instigate... Not instigate, but in like five, six swings, take out that Pebbles and punish him for that kill. So I really, I really do like those earlier stats on Sandwraith. And you don't get your items as fast, but still, it prevents a lot of deaths, and you can contribute a lot more to those fights earlier on, so. Yeah, like you said, you need to, if you're going for that, what's a nice spore breath, uh, if you're going for that Mock of Brilliance early, you need to get it early. And, yeah. and he is still going to get it in a decent time, but he has now taken a couple deaths on his, his journey to it. So Yeah, and that's not what you want. Shell Surf Song of the Sea comes in right here. Kelpfield up in seven seconds. But uh, no, not going to be going on the beacon after all. Yeah. Um, Not to mention, does this Wild Soul have his ulti? He does, okay. He's level A, 200 GPM. He's, he's picking it back up here. He's getting close to his sword himself, I mean... <laughs> You know, if Wild Soul gets his uh, Mach not too far behind Sandraid, he's still doing pretty good then. 
Yeah, there, there's actually three heroes in this game. Four heroes, actually, that you'll sometimes see mock on between Wild Soul, Zephyr, Sandwraith, and Brumble. Oh, you, do you see people building mock on Brumble? I haven't seen sometimes. them play it. So maybe in IHL games, maybe a little I, bit more so. I have so. seen before. It's not too common. Normally, you okay. just go either uh, the tanky route with the Helm of the Black Legion or the flying Brumble with the portal key. Yeah, I, I would never build the mock on Bramble. I would criticize that normally. Unless it's kind of a troll pickup, you know, you're going to win the game. Ooh. What happened? Top lane, Bubbles is getting initiated on by Ooh, Pebbles. Gets away, though. But Did he, he not got, get the full he, combo off? No, he didn't. He got, he take covered part of the combo, so he didn't get, you know, hit with the entire double damage combo. He managed to take cover part of the stalagmites and re thus reduce some of the damage. But... It was close. Well, not bad. It will survive. Level 9 and that, Wild Soul. That, that Bracer that, uh -oh. that Trial is picking up. Doing work. There's the ult going off from Sandwraith. Not actually using it, though. Uh, to port anywhere, that is. As, ooh, Torture is in some trouble. Typhoon goes down, and there's the Slagmites. Gust actually making it miss. And White's going to be able to escape, at least for now. Hits the chain reaction, and that could be crucial. Glacial Downpour going to be coming in as well as the Desert Curse is going on to Wild Soul. Doing a lot of damage, but Wild Soul not going to be able to actually finish him off. As there's the Brumble Wall coming up, and Wild Soul will go down to the Spore Breath. And Zephyr takes the Ice Imprisonment. There's the Chuck on the Glacius right there. And Slagmites do finish off uh, Tralf and Glacius takes the fall as well. Now Zephyr in some trouble, but a nice turret going to be coming out right there. Saving him for now. The Chuck on the Sandwraith, though. Sandwraith goes down, and Bramble going to be the last man standing. Going up against two, and it looks like they're just going to walk away. Tower ended up uh, getting denied, I think. Yeah, yeah. Did yeah. you catch whether Shrubbery was up or not? Because I saw at the second Sandwraith was taking damage, and Sh Shrubbery just came up then. I wasn't sure if it was up a little bit before that. So I, I was like, know. why isn't Sandwraith up the... Uh... As well, there's Stalagmites going out onto Bramble. Nice chain reaction, though, from White. They're going to man up on this, and there's the stun. Pebbles will go down, and Engineer actually in some trouble as well. What the hell? It's going to come down to this chain reaction, and White stop casting it and misses it. Francie will be able to escape, but uh, actually going to try to S2 his way up this cliff. Uses the turret. Now, Torture will have to turn around. What an insane sequence of events, and Bramble doing work, man. Look at that. Five, one, and three. How, what's his damage output this game? It's got to be okay. A little bit less than Sandry, but he's up there on the charts. I'm telling you, somebody asked me when I was doing Q&A right before this game, next breakout hero. And I said, Empath or Brumble? Well, I think, um, yeah, Empath had some moments where, especially at the start of Lockpick, oh. she was being picked up a... Nice stun there onto Zephyr, and nice use of the uh, so wall coming damage. up. Look at that damage! Pick up Brumble, okay, guys. Now here's the thing about Bramble Wall. It destroys Polywog wards almost instantly. Oh, I know Polywog I... is sort of phased out of usability right now yeah. due to the dual mid metagame. We don't did see I... Polywog as much anymore. It destroys Polywog wards, and if I'm not mistaken, it actually, I think it can destroy Engineer ulti. Um, it destroys ulti or turret, one of the two, I can't remember which. Well, not both? Uh, no, not both, for some reason, it's weird. Okay, I know it does destroy words, or it used, it used to destroy words anyway, I'm not sure if they patched it out or anything, but... Yeah, uh, did I tell you that about the polywog? Because I actually point that out no. a lot. No, like, when Bramble first got released, I was actually launched into a game with the polywog priest, and, well, I... I was the polywog priest, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, was... nice keg right there onto Bubbles, and Trout is going to drop his fourth death in the game. And Moon, I have zero, or excuse me, not Moon, Franzi, I have like no clue how they saw the Bubbles right there. But it was a perfect keg, knocked down the trees, and allowed the combo to come in from Pebbles. Okay, Hammer's got his gold now for what, maybe a Steam Boots, or what do you think he's going to go here? Hey, Steam. Is he going to go straight for a tanky item and a helm? Who is this? Timer, Heimer. Heimer on Sandra. Yeah, 1500. Yeah, he does need those stats, as I was talking about yeah, before. Yeah, he certainly so he does. Actually I mean, the mock on its own, he's still just very, very easy to blast in those fights. Uh, maybe not ultra easy. I mean, imagine a tanky Sandwraith with that Bramble Shrubbery. That is going to be annoying to deal with. That's basically like six seconds of the fight. They can't really do too much damage to Sandwraith. I mean, his passive, once it's maxed out, 16% reduction. What's the reduction from Shrubbery? For, uh, yeah, 40%. Like, it's almost over 56% reduction before we're talking about his armor and his magic business coming into play. Yeah, it is pretty that's damn it. insane. And, uh, well, yeah, that's... Whew, holy crap, I didn't think about that. That's actually crazy. Yeah, yeah. 
And uh, the, the slow from the Desert's Curse combined with the slow from Bramble and the speed boost from Bramble is allowing going to allow Sandwraith to just walk straight through. Oh, yeah. Um, I'd really like to see a Null Fire Blade, actually. I think I'd like to see a Null Fire Blade picked up a lot here by Sandwraith so that he's going to yeah, be able to Geos is uh, so strong on him. This well, might actually be a I'm, game where he might... I'm going to say Geos, Shrunken Head, and... Um, and no fire blade. I think I yeah, want to I was actually going to say this might be a game where he needs a, a shrunken head. Although he would probably get away with it. Oh, Pebbles gets taken out by a uh, ice imprisonment to chuck back, but Pebbles is still so slow. And Sandrake just what was Nick thinking? Him. Like, did he get caught or was he going for a jump? He, he tried to go for Glacius. This is what I was talking about. The all game, every time Pebbles was doing a jump, I said, you know, if only like Sandrake had his steam boots, he'd be able to click R and kill this Pebbles that has his spells down. Uh, now Sandwraith obviously has a lot more than that, but you saw right there, he just blasts that Pebbles when he tries to go for an uh, initiation that doesn't quite pay off. Yeah, we'll see. But uh, Sandwraith, I mean, like you said, he's, he's still a very powerful hero. In fact, he's gotten stronger since he was last in the meta. Uh, gotten a couple of buffs. The problem is... Well, that's arguable, because the orbs do no longer work uh, on his ulti. And there was a couple tweaks, and he doesn't get a assist gold, from what I recall, right? From his ulti anymore? Okay, well, you didn't they tone that down? Okay, you know more than I do. That, I guess I forgot that those buffs act, or those nerfs actually but came through. He, he got stronger in, when you want to play him more aggressively and more yes. gank style because they did reduce the cooldown heavily on his ultimate. Uh, and that thing's the mana pretty costs. much old. What's up? And the mana cost, the desert, and the mana cost across the board, and and a little bit of the desert's curse scaling as well. Yep. So for a more aggressive Sandwraith, wanting to contribute a little more to the game earlier, they definitely buffed him in that capacity. And honestly, I think that's a lot more fun. Oh, I completely agree that it's more fun. Whether it's more viable, well, we'll see right here. Heimer making it work so far. 397 gold per minute, top in the game. And Beekit dropping off significantly as Brumble's trying to man up on Hag. If Brumble's actually able to get either a portal key or a Hellflower, um, he will absolutely crush Hag. In yep, these six seconds is really no joke for that shrubbery. I mean, cast it on Sandwraith right before he's about to go into those fights or just after he jumps in. And any of the damage he takes from that... You know, initial... <laughs> I mean, you don't want to just let Sandra sit there for six seconds attacking you, so they're going to be casting spells on him. He's going to be mitigating a lot of that damage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out why there's not an elephant in this game. I don't so, know. I don't know. Uh, it just seems like it'd be the perfect fit, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh man, so Trowel from the bottom lane just trying to find some farm. He's gone the double bracer route. Just trying to get really, really tanky on this bubbles. Up to 1200 life with the steam boot set to strength. He just does not want to die to... Yeah, well, uh, he can't jump by pebbles anymore. He can survive yeah. pebbles jump. And they don't really have too much follow-up unless you're looking at Hag. And with his vestments, honestly, unless Hag uh, is going to use that bat blast, he can probably survive that too, so... Yeah, definitely a possibility. And, ooh, Sandraith. I, okay, I, uh, who did I see play Sandwraith as? Keg comes in missing there. Still the combo though, Desert Curse going out as well. And Pebbles not going to be able to follow up. There's the actual follow up from the Hellward team. Kelfield going to be coming out. Chain reaction on the Engineer, and Engineer will go down. Pebbles with the haste going to try to run away and should be successful. Wild Soul was able to port on out of there. And so another failed gank right there getting turned around. And Franzi is the one that ends up paying for it. But. Pebbles would have paid for it if he didn't have that uh, haste ball up. Yep, yep, yep. And I'm actually uh, trying to remember right now. I saw a Sandwraith game a while ago, and it was the first... Um, the first game... Damn it, what the hell? I have literally no clue how that came up. Um, but I was trying to remember because I saw this team run an offensive Sandwraith, and I want to say it was... 007, the first time that I saw them. And they ran an offensive Sandwraith and just gank wraith the entire game. Just crazy amounts of ganks. 120 seconds on the dot, he used that ultimate. Just trying to find style. anybody out uh, of position. I like to Empath, Empath Sandwraith. Man. That's what it was. That That's what it was. Dude, I think that... I don't want to say anything, but I'm pretty sure I used to run that in TMMs all the time and play against some of those guys in TMMs and all that. I used to run that every single game with... Uh, some of the old Vitriola crew and Mikey's and Para. Vitriolic used to run it, but that's because I used to run it with Mikey's and they took that strap. But I used to, and I ran it against uh, the old, uh, what was it, Sender, Insania, Keizu. Oh, Bat Blast under Bramble right here. Not tanky enough. 
used a lot of it, but uh, oh, go ahead. I don't want to take credit, but I'm pretty sure I originated that being popular and by extension why a lot of those teams were using it. And Vitriolic and all those guys, that, that's because that's the style I was running, the gank heavy aggressive sand raid. Maybe about five months ago, four or five months ago, I was pretty heavy about it. But uh, yeah, Vitriolic used to run that quite a bit actually, even before 007. Yeah, it might not have been 007, it might have been somebody else. I probably vitriolic. Say, probably vitriolic. Honestly, uh, I'm pretty sure it wasn't vitriolic. Really? But I don't know. Maybe it was. It was in the sound. Okay. And they were known for it in recent time. Around the same uh -oh. time. They. Okay. Uh oh. Da 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 da. He's well, fine. Pebbles he's doesn't fine. have. He's got a thousand. Mana. Yeah. He's even if Pebbles went on him, he would. They do find torture though. There's the chuck. Slagmite's coming in after the use of something that got him some more mana but torture does go down but here comes sand wraith energy field gonna be going out the keg not actually gonna hit getting too slowed right there and sand wraith gonna get slow number two here momentarily and a gust actually pushing it back oh heimer probably so mad that he actually could not close the distance <laughs> oh man he what what are the what are the GPM charts looking right here? Okay, he has his mock now on Wild Soul. Um, mock, no bulwark or anything yet, so he's not that that scary yet. But still, Wild Soul's a tanky hero, hard for even a sand rate to take out. We're looking at Zephyr sitting at 300 GPM here. Uh, how much gold save of 1200? Helm, Hood, nothing too dangerous yet himself. Does he have anything on the courier? Or? No, not that I see. Ogre Axe is belonging to. Riser, okay. Hag. Yeah, so Sandra is still sitting at a really good spot this game to take yeah. over. Hag has finished up her Hellflower, so I talked okay. about uh, Bramble getting one. Not going to be his choice. And <laughs> uh, Hag actually picks one up, so very, very standard on her. And with that uh, Mighty Blade coming out now, she's going to be in a good position to not only uh, be able to get involved in these team fights, but also much less likely to get ganked. She sets those Steam Boots to strength, 1300 life pretty comfortable amount yeah yeah she, well I mean once Hag gets her health flower I mean her farming amplifies still because she pretty much has you know near infinite spamming mount on those creeps she'll be finishing up her shrunken pretty soon after uh, it looks like you know just just a few minutes ago it seemed like TTS was in the lead or just like not TTS but team Moravis was, was in the lead or pretty much equal and now all of a sudden you see a snowball advantage uh, coming here out of complexity they're almost 6-7k up now in gold. Yeah, they definitely are. And, well, complexity starting to definitely get out of control. But uh, Wild Song, what does he have on his bear? He's got the mock, maybe looking toward his Soul's Bulwark at some point. Needs some Ghost Marchers on that bear, perhaps. But speaking of Soul's Bulwark, that is what Bramble chooses to pick up next. Um, so, Sandraith, he picks up the Firebrand. Going to get some additional mobility. But as we saw in the last uh, team fight, the last chase, not able to close the distance. Really might need a Geometer's Bane or a Shrunken Head as well. Hag's going to initiate right there. How far goes out. Brumble Wall is there as well. Completely whipped on the Brumble Wall. Is ever going to come back in? And there's the Gust on top of the Typhoon. Just trying to man up on Sarah. But look how little damage he's taking. Just kidding. Down goes Sandrick. Bramble going to be shortly there. There to follow. And well, Wild Soul will go down in the backfield. But Hag's coming up to try to finish people off. Punch is coming in. There's the Chuck on the Glacius. And they're going to try to run down White as well. Portal key available in seven seconds, but no, White does a good juke actually, and now going to be able to escape with that TP. Yeah, uh, look what the engineer ulti did to the Sandraith that fight. Uh, he sort of poured it into it. Uh, engineer caught him around it. Sandraith had to stop what he was doing, attack that ulti a few times, and in the meanwhile, he's pretty much a sitting duck for that follow-up combo from Complexity. Uh, he didn't really get to move around that fight at all, which <laughs> you know you can't really. There's nothing really he could do. Yeah, he needs that shrunken head. Yeah, yeah. Um. So not typically an item that we see on Sandraith, but I really do feel like he needs one for this team. Like, eats it really, really bad, actually. Yeah, um, I honestly think Engineer is, like, one of the worst, if not the worst, support hero to fight with a Sandraith. <laughs> it, it is just so difficult. All right, and did you see... Sandraith was just sitting there taking approximately zero damage, um, mm -hmm. and then it looked like the Ensnaring Shrubbery fell off, and goodbye. Well, actually, Sandra is going to go on to Engineer here. And Engineer gets the goodbye. Engineer did drop his bound eye, it looked like, right there. And killed it right before mm -hmm. he did go down. So good play there by Franzi. 
But yeah, as soon as that ensnaring shrubbery was actually down, Sandra just fell completely and totally very quickly. Yeah, it looked like they were waiting there, waiting there, waiting there, and then as soon as it died out, Pebbles was just clobbered him. <laughs> Did the Hellflower get cast on him as well? Is that I think that it was on Bramble initially, actually. Okay. Okay. But I'm not positive. So we'll see. Going into team fights like that, yeah, Sandwraith just getting kited around, not able to put out the damage that he's looking for. I mean, even though he's at 25% of the damage in the game, not able to just focus one hero down just yet. Doesn't have the damage for that. He's just, it's spreading all around, and his team, unfortunately, is just not able to capitalize on that uh, low life that everyone has. Yeah, the, the, bubbles is, the Bubbles is nice, but they have two squishy heroes here in this tour in the Glacius, and I feel like... Oh, my God. Yeah, I caught that one all on camera, and uh, it was just a combo coming in from Pebbles, and Hag follows up with the Hellflower and the Bat Blast. Dead Sandrate. Yeah, full HP, huh? Full HP. Oh, bottom lane. Rubble Wall gonna be going up onto Zephyr. There's the Song of the Sea and the Glacial Downpour. Down goes Zephyr. Haxrin taking the fall and now gonna be working on this tower. Level 4 Impalement gonna come out and make very quick work of that tower. Bramble Wall. <laughs> I feel like they melt when they're caught right next to it and frozen like that. That is so much damage. And the slow is so strong too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh man. Pretty dang crazy. Yeah, I mean, the most difficult part about Bramble is his laning. And he's not a terrible laner, but. He's actually a pretty decent laner, in my opinion. No, but he occupies. As... What the hell, Trouf? Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what that one was all about right there, but White's gonna TP on it and die as well. And Defensive Tower gonna go down in favor of Complexity. It's there. Mixed scrim team is just falling apart a little bit right here. Engineer perhaps going to be going down. Nice job using the trees, actually. And Engineer trying to escape still. Uh, well, they're going to get the combo onto uh, Sandwraith in the backfield. Engineer will eventually go down. The bound eye being picked up there by Moravis. But Pebbles actually going to try to push some people down. Sandwraith still manning up on players right now. As Moravis is coming back in. The rumble wall goes down, getting Pebbles. But not before Heimer goes down. And Boo Boo Bear gonna get killed. Oh man, this game. Yeah, I was gonna say Bramble. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. I mean, it's going back to that. We I mean, have that crazy fight, but I mean, I think we expected that at this point. I mean, Complexity's had the momentum now for quite a bit, and you know, it's hard for their primary carry, the Sand Wraith, to actually get around the fights and do anything now without a Shrunken. So, kind of an expect to resolve that fight. Uh, Shrunken had finished up on Hag now too, so. Uh, the kiting will not stop anytime soon. Will not stop indeed. Definitely needs to get something to increase his mobility. And Step one there, shrunken head. Nice thing for the Hellborn team after that fight. They did recover the bound eye. So I'm going to be able to take back some of the map vision here. Yep. And did you catch what the initiation right there? Uh, from no, you said about Trowel? Like, he I, don't, I don't know what that was. Back? Yeah. Uh, what, what, what did he do? He just used his shell surf like he was trying to farm, and then somebody started running toward him, and he had a portal key, but he used the shell surf instead, and just uh -huh. literally shell surfed into the middle of four people, and then died immediately. Maybe he was going to try to blink out? Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Wretched Hag taking a lot of damage down here in the bottom lane, and she is going to have to blink away, but using the ult right here, Wretched Hag actually goes down! And Sandwraith might even port to this. No, not going to. So Riser, even though he's very farmed, 378 gold per minute, level 17, you see right there just how much damage this Sandwraith has the potential to deal. Yeah, I mean, Riser had his shrunken up, but I don't think that really would have saved him, right? I mean, I didn't catch how that all played out. I mean, how did that all play out? Because I'd imagine the Sandwraith initially daggering him. Did he try to man up or exchange hits? Because if he just blinked away... Okay, worth it. He had to have tried to do something silly. There's no way uh, the sound he blinked, he blinked in to actually okay. try to kill a Glacius. Used oh, the, okay. Okay. Used the Hellflower on the Glacius and then tried to just walk away. And All used, right, that... used blinks on cooldown, but... Yeah, okay, that explains it then. Yeah. Sad, sad days there for Riser. Who's, uh, well, we'll see. I, I was talking with uh, Trowel earlier, and we both agree. We think this is a tryout for complexity. 
Uh, yeah, I just, from what I've, <laughs> you know, mumblings, mumblings. Yeah, <laughs> it's, or, that's all we get is mumblings. It's what you, you hear know, it, it around the, the, the case so. sign and... Well, he'd be a very powerful addition to the complexity lineup. A lot of people have praised Riser as being one of the most consistent players on the scene for a while now. So, I mean, he certainly is, and uh, really unfortunate that personal issues uh, kind of left him unable to attend the last Dream Hack. But I'm sure that he'd be able to get it all sorted out, so that he would be able to attend any future lands. Is I'm sure there's going to be a lot in store for Heroes of New Earth this year. Yeah, yeah. Should be an exciting year. I'm hoping to make it out to a few myself, but only time will tell about that. Maybe even see you at one of those, Ep. Ideally. Are you going to that January? Or... Oh, actually, Shell Surf Song to see Kelfield coming in right there. Bramble Wall up on the Engineer. The Engineer just gets obliterated. There goes the Engineer Ultimate as well. And now going to be turning it back around as Bubbles already did go down. Bramble Wall still doing some damage. Huge Map Blast coming in, hitting four players, though. And Glacius going to be going down in the back. No, the Storm Seer going to keep him up, actually, as a TP on out does take Wild Soul out of the battle. And, well, looks like that is going to be it for there. But Did you catch a huge play by Beakhead tossing his ally out uh, to his other ally? That was, he tossed, I think he tossed I a Zephyr not. out of all that chaos and let him survive. Yeah. I did not. Big he tossed that. If I'm not mis... Can you, you can do that, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. No, he tossed, his, he tossed... I believe he tossed Zephyr to... Maybe it was a Hag, someone that was TPing out and saved his life that way, so... Wait, it looked like that. I don't know. Maybe it was a Sand Wraith Illusion that was on his teammate. Either way, he tossed him out of all the chaos, so... Uh, definitely saved his life there. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, well, you also saw that the energy field did go down very, very quickly to that Bramble Wall. Oh, okay. So the energy field and the turret cannot be targeted? I, I think so. Okay. I'm pretty sure. I, I was under the impression that all gadgets could just get... Well, the energy field will be targeted by creeps, I'm pretty sure. Whereas the turret will not. Okay. I think that's the reasoning. Is, is it doesn't for some reason there's something different there. I don't know. I, I see. Element, well, either way, element user it. is probably it's watching right now. The energy, if the energy field is killed, that's good enough. Yeah. Element user is probably watching right now, and he'll tell me in a minute here on Skype. You guys are so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, huge shout out to element user catching all the bugs in uh, Han before they go live and getting them fixed up whenever. Good buddy of mine and. Likes to relay whenever I say something that's uh, inaccurate on stream. Mm -hmm. But uh, you were mentioning before that team fight, am I going to be making out to... Oh, the... the this is like a February 1st, Howie's on? Yeah, I think so. Okay. It's, uh... I'm not going to that. I was considering it. I was considering yeah. flying out and just making an appearance. But really? I'm not going to go to it in the end. But That, that would be cool. Oh, I'll we'll catch see. you sometime soon. We'll see. I think I'm going to be there. But, uh, yeah, that's supposed to be celebrating the release of Han 3.0, I guess. So is that going to be coming out that weekend here? And just uh... January 31st, I think, is what it's been saying. Awesome. But, uh, I don't know. That's all kind of hearsay from what I've been seeing on Reddit and stuff. Mm -hmm. No official information there that I know of just yet. Well, I know the event is for a launch party, essentially, so... There you go. Well, we'll see about that one. Back into this game, though. Complexity up. 15,000 golden experience. 37 minutes into the game. B-Kid still looking real strong. 377 gold per minute. Hacks up to 388. Well, actually, look at this. Three player, or Four players on Complexity between 360 and 380 gold per minute. Yeah, I was going to make that note earlier uh, Earlier in the game. Uh, in the earlier laner fa laning phase, even around 15 minutes, no one was really suffering on farm on the complexity lineup. The lowest was an engineer that was sitting at 180. And still, it's pretty much the same story. Everyone else like was sitting around like 250 to 300. And now their GPM has increased even further. And the lowest farmer, engineer, 170, not bad at all. So, Yeah, certainly not bad at all. And Sanray does finally go for that shrunken head. So... Okay. Did you let Heimer know that uh, he needed to pick that item up? No, I didn't say anything to him, but kind of he, I'm sure he realized as soon as he started warping into that NG ulti that you know, it was imperative for, for him to pick it up. So, Well, that or Bramble would have to be really good about destroying the NG ulti. But yeah. would you use your Bramble wall just to destroy the, the support NG's ulti? You know, uh, I don't know. Ideally so, not. Yeah. Unless it was like perfect positioning, you know, where you could get the heroes and the... Yeah. For sure. Now, looks like the Hellborn team was looking for an initiation here. Turret going to be going in as uh, what a sight. Oh, what? Hold on. How did that miss? Under what miss? 
Torture just attacked the ward from the high ground and it missed, and the ward lived. Oh, oh um, maybe they lost vision of it. Is there a bound eye? Yeah, Bramble has the bound eye. Bramble probably moved away, oh, and thus the ward well. recloaked. Hmm. I need to make sure to get back in there because they they probably think right now that they did have that. Uh, they did counter ward that, and that might come back to bite them. Yeah, we'll see. White walked away like it was it was done with. So. We'll see, but in the top lane, Bramble actually going to come up here. And there's the initiation. Celsius Song of the Sea going to be coming out with the Kelp Field onto Wild Soul. <coughs> How far is being applied? And Shunken Head's going up. Ultimate coming out right there. And there's Engineer going to be taking a lot of pressure. Engineer will go down. And now Sandrake's starting to look at some other people. Bramble Wall going to be going up. Catching Beacon just disintegrates Beacon right there. The Mixed Grim team looking good in this team fight. But now it's perhaps time to get out of there as Bramble's still trying to go in. He needs to be very, very careful. What are you doing, Moravis? You need to be careful up there as he's going to die to the Zephyr. I have no clue what he's doing right now. Yeah, um... <laughs> oh, I don't know. No. Did you see how low Riser got there? He got down to 90 HP from the Sandwraith attacking him, and Sandwraith was mid-animation for the killing blow when Riser winded up blinking out. I felt so bad for Heimer, because had he killed the Hag there, that could have been potentially like an entirely different team fight. so... Yeah, it certainly could have been, and Sandra needs to turn his mock off right here, because they are very well aware of where he is, but does escape with that Desert's Curse, so great job by Heimer to actually get on out of there, and that team fight looked like it was going to be so good for the Hellborn team. Able to yeah. get a beautiful wall up, kill B-Kid, able to run down Engineer so quickly, run Hag out of the fight, and then everyone just kind of stuck around too long. They lost Bubbles, and I believe that was it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hag did not have her ulti up or was not able to get it off with her how low her HP got because there was a shrunken head sandwich that was just laying into her. Um, either, either way, uh, complexity turned it around. So, yeah, it did indeed. Now, well, now complexity 18,000 gold and experience up 41 minutes into the game. Things are starting to look perhaps a little bit grim on the other side, but I mean, all you really need sometimes is a sandwich. It's it's one of those heroes that can definitely he looks like 1v5. He's about to finish off his geometers here too, in just a second. Well, that's gonna be very nice. And then, what would you think going from there? Maybe a heart or frostburn or frostwolf. I meant or heart. Yeah. Yeah. And Boo Boo Bear actually picking up. Holy crap! I have not looked at this Baron forever. I'm so bad about doing that, and I apologize, guys. But uh, Demonic Breastplate, as well as a Mock, Ghost Marchers, and now a Brutalizer. Wow. Yeah, I expected the Demonic. I did not expect the uh, Brutalizer, per se. But he's up to 400 GPM now, so, I mean, okay. <laughs> Doing Where are all the now? creeps coming from? I mean, they, they, they just <laughs> all have tons of gold. Yeah, this is just something that Complexity is very good at. They're, they're very good at making sure that people are farming all locations, whether it's your short lane, your mid lane, your long lane, your jungle, The enemy your woods, the enemy ancients. Yeah. Very, yeah. very aggressive farmers, especially Moon on Wild Soul. He is not afraid to be on the other side of the map. And Hag as well, not afraid to be deep in a lane, uh, just getting some farm here. So it's worked out very well thus far. And Complexity still in a great spot, extending that golden experience lead with every minute that this game continues. Bubbles finally picks up a Hellflower now. Okay, Bubbles gets the health flower. Zephyr has a sheet. Uh, pretty insane. You don't get to see uh, sheep stick Zephyr that often. Oh, yeah, I, I did not actually see that. Yeah. That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sheep stick is never bad. Let's yeah, that. definitely. And, well, looks like they're going to be going on in here. Sheep stick, portal key Zephyr, best Zephyr. And Torture gets spotted out. Will they be going in? Shell Surf comes in. No, not going to be any initiation just yet. And uh, that ward is still up over here. The ward site from Franzi in uh, this area. Still covering Kong for another 70 seconds. Unfortunately. I feel like Timer kind of needs that Frostwolf so he stops getting kited. But then he needs a Geo for DPS. He needs a Savage Mace to do lots of DPS. I don't know. He needs a lot of things. When you're when you're all in on one hero, it's very, very hard to actually make that work. His stalagmites are coming out and missing, though, and B-Kid turns right around. Like, it's a very different game when you're all in on one hero, like the sand rate versus being all in on 
four heroes. Well, like, you know, the, you do when people go all in on one hero, you buy a Hellflower. Or you buy a sheep stick, and they have two health flowers and a sheep stick, and blinks on... and a brutalizer and a rooting yeah. bear. Yeah, um, <laughs> they have all the tools to deal with a all-in type of strategy. So, yeah, we will see here. And uh, up in the jungle, it actually looks like somebody's getting engaged on as that is Wild Soul actually baiting the Bramble. There's a nice bash though. And then the root to follow up. Sheep comes in. Bramble could be in some trouble. Ultimate could be coming in from Sandwraith. And Bramble's just gonna get absolutely dropped. The energy field gonna be going up. And a nice keg right there. Actually gonna save Engineer for now. And Sandwraith, look at all that time he spent trying to kill the Engineer. And now he's just gonna get turned around upon and down goes Heimer. Four players still up for complexity and they've dealt with the Sandwraith. The ultimate uh, being used right there so that even with a buyback Sandwraith is not going to be able to be super, super effective. And looks like Complexity is just going to turn their attention toward this top lane and try to bring it down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what. I mean, honestly, they, they have everything they need to do. I mean, they have four heroes that almost have Sandwraith's GP. Oh, there's a Hellfire going out, but not really doing a whole lot. Clay just gets stunned out and killed right there. And Sandwraith gets sheeped, gusted back in. Bat Blast goes out, hitting two players, and down goes Heimer. Bubble's going to try to uh, use his Shell Surf to get out of there, but does not even matter. Rack's going to be going down here momentarily, and Complexity Gaming looking like they're going to take this win. Uh, well, hold on a second. Second buyback here on Sandraith. I, they can just reinitiate any moment they want right here. They're playing and back, but here honestly, it they comes. don't have to. Bear going to be out in the front lines, looks for that first hit bash. No. Uh, it's just so hilarious to see a Brutalizer on Boo Boo because the root and the bash, like... Yeah, they, it's not they one just, thing, it's the other. They, <laughs> they go off, like, independently of one another, and it's just like, root, bash, root, bash, root, bash. Yeah, insane yeah. lockdown. Every two and a half seconds on the basher, I think, or is it five seconds or something? Yeah. But, uh, you uh, know, item combo, item hero combo is fun that I've been uh, playing with in pubs lately. Is uh, the new Thunderclaw, uh, since it works on a charge based system and using mm -hmm. Gemini. Uh, you get like a Thunderclaw proc every other hit. Mm, interesting. As Hag's actually taking a lot of damage right here. Gonna try to blink away. Not quite able to get the Desert's Curse yet, and Riser will successfully be able to get out of there. Sandraith Ultimate, an 80 second cooldown at level 16. So able to just get plenty of. Uh, those off very very often yep and the bear does pick up a thunderclaw okay great speaking of thunderclaws yeah yeah I think the item is fantastic now I can't wait to see it picked up more yeah very very cool item as oh fancy gets hit by the brubble wall right here and he will go down three players of the hellborn team gonna get their hands in that one But yeah, that Thunderclaw, it's interesting the, the different kind of things that are used. I believe that Draconis and Bushwhack, both with their AoE cleaves, the ultimate from uh, Draconis, and then the passive from Bushwhack, I believe you get multiple. Actually, there's a first hit bash right there. Sheep going to be coming in as well. The chain reaction actually trying to save Rumble. And a nice push, but a gust back in. Storm Spirit and Bramble still going to be living. The Glacial Downpour comes down, but so will Glacius. Congor actually coming out to pound in a hit on Torture before he dies. And the stun's on to Sandray Hyper. Oh, he's getting so oh stunned. My God. <laughs> oh. Hyper goes down and Complexity takes that game in 48 minutes over the mixed scrim team. And Congor <laughs> adding to the stun lock right there. <laughs> Wild Soul is so mean. <laughs> it's so Yeah, Congor, okay. Wild Soul, there's Hellflowers being tossed out. He's just like stuck in one place. Oh, poor, poor guy. Well, Emp, that is going to do it for that game. Yep. Oh, well, thanks for letting me join. It was fun casting. Emp, always happy to have you on, man. And, uh, well, we'll talk soon. You have any shout outs before you go? Nope, just shout out to the uh, everyone in the Han community. <laughs> All right, Han community, see that's you. All right, Emp, we'll catch you later. Take it easy, man. Yep, see ya. Bye. All right, guys, well, that was Emperor, a.k.a. Brized of Domain of Pain, joining us for that cast. And we're going to be going into another one here momentarily, whether that is more scrims from Complexity or some Soundbuster Heroes League into some Han tour. Well, 
we will have to find out. Guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back in just a moment. And of course, a huge shout out to Complexity Gaming. Without their support, Colcast would not be possible. I would not be here casting for all of you guys. And, well, huge thanks to them for allowing us to be here, providing you with this awesome Heroes of New Earth content. Check them out over at ComplexityGaming.com. Make sure to sign up for an account over there so you can use the forums, comment on posts, participate in polls, and... Well, of course, you can even get your own stream set up over there at ComplexityGaming.com, their stream viewing service. So guys, make sure to do that. And, of course, a huge shout-out to the sponsors as well. Support them because they support Heroes of New Earth Esports in general. QPad, PNY Origin, Sound Blaster, Twitch, and G8 Brand. Guys, we'll be right back with another game right here on Colcast. Don't go anywhere.